to help families refinance their homes to invest in things like high tech manufacturing clean energy and the infrastructure that creates good new jobs you see i would never say these things at least not in a public address but someone else would someone like Jordan Peele. It's sort of learning to recreate that person's face by looking at the thousands of images over and over and over. <laughs> like a lot more research than you would think would, uh, would go into making a goofy video or something like that. Truly surprising for me. Um, yeah, I, I was just really surprised. I didn't do any after touching on that video. That was just using the technology that was available from the machine learning side. You don't even have to know what GitHub is. You don't have to know how to program in Python. None of that matters. You pay somebody 20 bucks and they'll create the fake for you. That's a bit of a game changer. You know, the everyday person who the deep fake sex video emerges in a Google search of your name, where for that person, it becomes almost impossible to debunk. While I don't think that's likely, I also don't think it's out of the question. And that is enough to keep me up at night. The margins are very, very thin. The last national election here in the U.S. was 80,000 votes in three states. You don't have to fool tens of millions of people. I don't think a deep fake will become a big political issue during the course of the campaign. Think about a well-placed rumor before an IPO. I think a lot of these things were problems already. Um, and so it's unclear to me how much machine learning really, you know, adds to those problems. I find it very difficult to sort of believe that there is something so uniquely devastating about video. Right now, what we are focusing on is developing forensic techniques to protect world leaders from deep fakes. We are particularly worried about how the Donald Trumps, Theresa May, and Angela Merkels of the world, how their likeness will be used to disrupt elections and incite potential violence in countries by creating fake content. There's some fun and entertaining, interesting application, but there is a weaponization of the technology. And I simply advocate that we as technologists, we acknowledge it and we start thinking not after the fact, but before the fact, how can we start putting some safeguards in place?